So we'll close this uh, lecture on uh, knowledge acquisition techniques uh, with um, a few uh, summarizing remarks, uh, uh, all bundled uh, as uh, usual in uh, checklists, which are ready for you to use. So closing comments. Uh, first one is the importance of timing, right? Um, you uh, start with informal interviews at the beginning, that's useful for two reasons. A, you don't know anything, so you're not even in a position to do more structured things. And it also helps you to establish a personal relationship with the expert. And then you uh, move to increasingly more structured methods for more focus, right? Clearly, you don't start with repertory grid. Right? You start with interviews, uh, you may then go to uh, self-reporting and uh, 20 questions or card sorting and only then close off with a uh, repertory grid. Um, uh, remember a comment that I've made at the beginning of this uh, 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 lecture, namely experts come in different types. Personalities matter. Some experts are much better at verbalizing than others. Um, some experts are not very good at verbalizing, but they're very good at self-reporting, uh, solving a problem and telling you about it, uh, or even doing the, the card sorting tricks, for example. And it's useful for you to be aware whether you're dealing with a, 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 an inarticulate or an introverted expert so that you can adjust in the choice of your methods. Okay, And uh, finally, you're not just interested in lists of things. You want structure, right? Because your knowledge-based system is going to need this structure. So repertory grids work well for classification domains, laddering uh, works well for hierarchical domains, uh, and so on. So be aware that you do the right choice of methods. Um, also be aware of these three phases, right? So the first phase is really knowledge identification, right? So then you're really to identify, well, what are the basic uh, concepts in this domain? Unstructured interviews may be laddering. Right. Then you're going to specify uh, more details of the knowledge. You can use stuff like card sorting, rep grid, uh, self-reporting. Uh, and finally, um, when you think that you're almost done uh, in the knowledge refinement stage, uh, you can turn to uh, uh, structured interviews. Now, again, use this uh, checklist of phases uh, to plan your own set of interviews and the techniques that you're going to use. So I'll close off with a diagram. Um, so in this diagram, the two axes are as follows. On the horizontal axis, uh, you'll find the distinction between explicit and implicit knowledge. Uh, so as we mentioned in earlier parts of this lecture, explicit knowledge, such as the stuff that you could also read in textbooks, that is easy to verbalize, uh, and the tested knowledge, you know, often hidden in culture or even in physical skills. So explicit or implicit and the knowledge between the difference between conceptual knowledge and process knowledge. So you could think of this as static knowledge about the objects and relations and process knowledge about the procedures and the steps. Okay. And uh, you have you can have concepts which are explicit or concepts which are implicit or you could have processes which are explicit or concepts which are implicit. And this diagram uh, tells you which technique would be most suitable for which type of combinations of these two dimensions. So if you're, you could try to think, well, am I dealing with a lot of implicit process knowledge? So people know how to do things, but I don't really talk about it. So a lot of implicit process knowledge, then you would end up in this corner of the diagram doing these kinds of techniques, etc. cetera.